eh, Massimiliano Maghini and Riccardo Caputo, 3D Rheological Modeling of the Aegean Region, its implication for the seismotectonics uh, of the area. Eh, Massimiliano, you have the floor and uh, okay. uh, please uh, share your screen. Yes. Here I am. So can you see it? Yes, we can. Okay, and can you hear me properly? Turn to full screen. Okay, it's okay. Okay, okay. very good. Uh, thank you, Professor Pravlidas, for uh, introducing me, and thank you for, to the organizer for, for inviting me. Uh, so now uh, I am Massimiliano Maggini. I am uh, right now a postdoc uh, at the University of Urbino. Uh, while uh, the, the project, uh, the, the talk that I, that I will give you today is related to my PhD project uh, that I carried out in, in Ferrara with Professor Caputo. So uh, the main, uh, uh, the main uh, topic of this talk is the 3D rheological modeling in the Aegean region and uh, its relative uh, implications for the seismotectonic features of, of the area. So. Uh, the, the main objectives of this work are, first of all, uh, the uh, assessment, the evaluation of the most important parameters for what concerns the uh, realization of uh, 1D rheological profiles. And then, obviously, the, the, the realization of this complete uh, 3D rheological modeling for the Aegean region with uh, a, a specific focus on the BDT, so the brittle to the tile transition depth. And finally, also the, the assessment of uh, logical modeling as uh, a tool, an effective and reliable tool uh, to, to, uh, to link uh, to the seismogenic behavior. So uh, for what concerns the geodynamic framework, I uh, will just go quickly here because the, the previous speakers have already thoroughly uh, described it. And so uh, it is generally the, the study area just corresponds to the broader region, region including also uh, Western Anatolia region. So now for what instead concerns the logical profiles, here we, we uh, assumed uh, the classical approach with uh, the uh, brittle and ductile uh, uh, formation being respectively uh, represented by uh, the frictional sliding, which is here represented by the, the equation at the top, and by the power low creep for the ductile deformation, uh, which is the, the middle equation. And also shown here at the bottom is the equation for the uh, geothermal gradient calculation, uh, which enters directly the, the, the exponential term of the power law creep. So it's very important, it's very relevant for uh, obtaining a reliable logical profile to uh, determine appropriately the, the uh, geothermal gradient. And then you see here on, on the graph on the left, uh, this small, uh, this small uh, red square here indicates uh, the, the position of the brittle to the tile transition, so the position of the BDT. And we will focus uh, mainly on this, on, on the depth of this brittle to the tile transition, especially in, in the crust, so that the shallowest, let's say, brittle to the tile transition, uh, if there are more, more than one, uh, because we are interested mainly in the size, in the upper crust seismotectonics. So you see circle here a lot of the, of the parameters from, from these equations, and for all these parameters, we had to uh, collect data mainly from the literature in order to proceed with our modeling. So uh, I will just show you some of this data now. So the, the, the concept behind this work was first the, the, the collection of data mainly from the literature and from tectonic dynamic consideration. And at the same time, we also developed a MATLAB script in order to proceed with, with, with our modeling. So uh, for what concerns, for example, the, the heat flow data here, we took into account data from, from different uh, scales and, and sources. And we, we obtain a final width as average map, uh, highlighting, for example, the, the highest values along the volcanic uh, Lenny Park. Uh, similarly, for the strain rate, again, different sources of data, we, we try to merge them into a final width as average map, uh, highlighting, again, the, 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 the concentration of strain along the, the main deformational belts. For the, for the crustal thickness data here, we took into account uh, uh, more depth maps uh, as obtained with, with different uh, geophysical methods. 
And again, uh, the final weighted average map indicates a very thick crust below the Ellenites and a thinner crust below the agency extending region. For the tectonic regime, instead, we, we, we use mainly uh, the, the indication given by the Gretas database from Caputo and Pavlides. So the, the database of the seismogenic sources, we consider it the respective rakes of each of each source and try to uh, define this tectonic regime map with with the uh, red colors indicating prevailing compression the blue colors uh, the, the extensional region and then the the, the, the yellow colors uh, the, the strike sleep region moving on for what concerns the, the geometry of the subduction zone and the slab we consider uh, some recent models one from bocchini in italy the, another from apart italy we, we try to, to merge them together and, and try to obtain a, a slab top depth surface that we used for the modeling of the subduction zone geometry. And finally, for the port fluid pressure, uh, we generally assigned uh, an isostatic value to, to the bulk of the study area, but for a specific region, as for example, the region corresponding to the submarine accretionary complex of the Mediterranean Ridge or uh, the continental accretionary wedge close to the Albonites, we, we selected slightly higher, higher values. Uh, indicating super hydrostatic conditions. So now let's move let's move on to, to the next step of this of this talk, which was the, the sensitivity analysis that we carried out uh, as a first uh, as a first stage of this research. Uh, so what we did was try to evaluate the uh, impact, the influence of the variations of uh, any single parameter uh, in the governing equations for the modeling. Uh, by varying them, uh, by, by, by varying every parameters while keeping all the other constant in a first stage. Uh, and so, for example, you see here the frictional sliding parameters uh, that are changed with respect to a reference value, which is shown with the magenta curve. And you see that each parameter is changed by 50%. And you see that um, for the frictional sliding parameters, the main effect uh, of the variations of these parameters on the resulting strength envelope is the change of the of the uh, BDT uh, strength rather than the BDT depth. So you see the changes the, the, the coefficient of this curve rather than the BDT depth itself. Instead, if we consider the creep parameters, you see that in these cases, the variations of this, uh, these parameters, including the thermal ones, um, they, they cause these variations both in the BDT depth and in the BDT strength. Um, and you see that uh, also the most influential parameters in, uh, seems to be the, the thermal ones, especially surface heat flow and thermal conductivity. Now, to carry out our sensitivity analysis, we uh, selected two case studies uh, in different uh, uh, tectonic settings of the Aegean region, one being to the Kefalonian Transmont Fault region, so a strike sleep transpressional setting and the other being the uh, Calidomo region in central Greece, so a purely extensional setting. And we realized the, the corresponding uh, uh, logical profiles uh, with uh, the selection of, the, of our preferred values for each, for each input parameter. Um, then what we did was uh, to uh, use a kind of uh, statistical analysis approach, uh, similar to, uh, let's say, a Monte Carlo analysis, where we uh, generated more, more than uh, 100,000 runs by varying all the input parameters together this time, so simultaneously, uh, and varying each of them uh, among its respective uh, uncertainty range. And we, we try to verify whether there, there could be synergistic effect maybe in a, uh, with these joint uh, uh, variations. Uh, so in terms of uh, uh, the, the statistical analysis results, we, we compared uh, them with, with the values given for three variables being the BDT depth, the BDT strength, and the BDT temperature. Uh, we, we compared them with the values obtained from the reference profiles that I showed you before, uh, which, are show, which are written here in, in blue. And you see that the peak of the statistical distribution for all these three uh, variables, they tend to, to, to fit quite well uh, with, with the values obtained for the reference profile. And this is observed for both test sites. So um, we, we can safely say that uh, effectively there are no real 
important synergistic effect and uh, also this this kind of uh, variation and uncertainty can be can be also viewed in this sort of uh, graphical representation of the uncertainties so you see that the, the for both test sites this is for the leader one for example you see that um, the higher the, the darker is the color of the blue cloud around the, the reference profile the, the higher is the concentration of the uh, the number of curves falling uh, uh, in that in that region so uh, in, the, in this way you can also try to uh, give a first order estimate of the potential uncertainties related to the realization of strength envelopes and for example for the bdt depth parameter in this case the potential uncertainty is around 1.52 kilometers. Now, uh, at this point, I would like to recall one uh, long known concept, uh, uh, which is the, the, the link between uh, uh, rheology and seismogenic processes at depth, which is, uh, has been studied since the 80s from Tipson and Schultz. And the concept here is that the BDT depth could be could be used uh, as a as a down deep uh, uh, as a limit uh, to to the thickness of the seismogenic uh, layer, and uh, we we wanted we tried to to verify this uh, whether this concept could hold for the IGN region by uh, comparing uh, the model at the BDT depth according to our modeling for more than sixty test sites in uh, all over the IGN region in different also tectonic settings. We compare this model at depth, depth, which is here shown with the, the uh, dotted purple line. Uh, we compare with the seismicity cutoff depth, uh, which is here uh, represented instead by the uh, red uh, dashed line. Um, the seismicity cutoff depth as obtained from uh, um, re relocated seismicity catalogs available in, in the literature. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, this is uh, taken from the Lick Triconis area. You see that uh, central, uh, western central Greece. You see that uh, there's a good agreement between uh, the BDT and the seismicity cutoff depth. And uh, I will just now show you a couple of examples. We have uh, actually recently published a, a paper on Journal of Statistical Geology about uh, this this comparison. If you want to have a look. Uh, but anyway, here's another example from uh, offshore uh, Chalkidiki region, so Northwestern IGNC, uh, in a transnational regime. In this case, we consider a background seismicity uh, relocated uh, catalog. Uh, and again, there's a good fit between the two, the two uh, indicators. Uh, the same could be seen also, for example, here in uh, Left Kala instead, so a transnational regime, and considering a sequence seismicity relocated catalog in this case. So we also had the information on the on the magnitude for this for this test site and for all the test sites where we had also this information, we tried to verify how much of the also of the seismic moment was released uh, above the BDT, the BDT, so within the brittle layer. And almost 100 100% of the seismic moment was effectively released above the BDT. So we, we were uh, quite satisfied with this result. So now at this point, uh, I'll move on to the 2D modeling. Uh, in this case, we, we had also, uh, since we work now on a more uh, regional scale, let's say, we had to consider also um, large scale processes such as the, the subduction one. So we try to also to take into account the thermal perturbation, for example, related to the subduction process. And we model that the subduction zone thermal features and they're quite consistent with other models from, from literature. So for what concerns the, the 2D modeling, we, we focused mainly on the Hellenites and on the potential differences that there could be in terms of logical and then interpretation of um, the northern Hellenites, which are here characterized by a, a geodynamic uh, continental collision setting, and so transit from A to C, while instead uh, the, the, in the southern Hellenites, transit from D to F, uh, the, the setting here is more typical of an oceanic subduction setting. So we had to assume, obviously, some very simplified geological models for the continental collision and the oceanic subduction settings. And then in terms of uh, the, the results of our modeling, uh, here we are focused on the BET trends. So the variations from uh, Southwest to Northeast in each case, 
so moving from the let's say the lower plate to the upper plate so here are the results for the continental collision transects a to c and you see that among them the three transects are quite similar uh, but you see that moving from southwest to northeast uh, the BDT tends to be at around 30 kilometers in the in the Apulian plate, let's say, and then it, it, it moves to shallower depth at around 20 kilometers in, in the mainland Greece. Uh, temperature instead remains quite, quite constant at the BDT because the BDT always occurs actually here in this case in continental lithosphere, so it mainly depends on the onset of plasticity uh, for quartz and feldspar minerals. And then the strength tend to decrease because of the shift of the shift from the southwest to northeast from a compressional to an extensional uh, setting. For what concerns instead the oceanic subduction transect D to F, you see that uh, there are some differences from the continental collision settings in the sense that, for example, uh, in the in the lower plate, the BDT here lying in the oceanic. Uh, lithosphere is deeper is at around 40 kilometers and then becomes very much shallower in the in the back arc in the in the overriding plate at, at around 10 15 kilometers uh, mainly because of the very high geothermal gradients in, in this area and also the temperature has a different trends because uh, in the in the western sectors here the the BDT occurs in the oceanic uh, lithosphere uh, with mu very much higher temperatures for the onset of plasticity of mafic uh, minerals and then the strength instead uh, has these this similar trends uh, with actually with very much higher differences. So now in terms of uh, the, the, the real distribution of brittle and ductile layers and the comparison between the continental collision and the oceanic subduction settings, uh, the, the main differences that we can observe here or the, the blue the blue layer uh, indicates the brittle the brittle layers, the, the red one, the ductile, layers and the whitish color indicate the, the brittle to the tile transitions. So the main difference is uh, we're saying uh, is uh, represented by the fact that in the continental collision setting, more than one uh, brittle layer, especially in the, in the Eastern sectors could be observed uh, mainly because uh, the difference with the oceanic subduction is that in the oceanic subduction setting, there's a very much higher geothermal gradient, especially in the back arc region. So uh, ductile deformation tends to prevail below the, the first uh, thin brittle layer in the, in the uppermost crust. So now let's move on to the 3D model, uh, the, the final 3D model that we realized for the for once seen the one distant envelopes and then the 2D transect. This is a representation of the BDT depth and its 3D variations for the Aegean region. So as I said, we, we were mainly focused on the BDT uh, depth, especially the first BDT depth, uh, the shallowest one. And this is view from, from the south. So just to give you some, some references, this uh, is the Puglia region in Italy. This is the Albanian coast. And then here is the uh, Anatolian, Western Anatolian coastline. Uh, so uh, you, you can see for this representation that in the in the lower plate uh, the BDT generally lies at around 40 kilometers for the oceanic sectors, while in the continental counterparts it it is a little shallower at around 30 33 kilometers, while for the upper uh, overriding plate of the Aegean Sea and mainland Greece, Western Anatolia region, the BDT generally. Uh, lies at much shallower depth um, around 10 uh, 15 kilometers with obviously some local uh, variations mainly due to uh, heterogeneities in parameters such as the surface heat flow the strain rate and so on so now this is the same representation but uh, view in map but here the the main the main point is that we could try to uh, this map from this map we could try to uh, link to each uh, geodynamic uh, setting a uh, uh, kind of representative typology of profile uh, according to our modeling. Uh, so for example, for the uh, Golden Trust Belt, the Northern Hellenites region, a kind of jelly sandwich model with more than one brittle layer is the most representative one, while instead the creme brulee model with a very thin brittle layer in the upper crust is generally associated to the uh, uh, extending uh, and uh, agency region. Instead, uh, the, the caramel slab with a very thick brittle layer extending down to the mantle is more typical of the cold and hold uh, oceanic crust, 
uh, of the uh, lower plate. Now, for what concerns BT strength, as I just already show you in part with the transect uh, phase, uh, with transect uh, slides, uh, you see that uh, the higher values are observed again in the oceanic sectors at the BT, also because the BT is deeper here, so the strength is higher. And while very much lower values are observed in the in the back arc region, even lower than 100 megapascal. Then for BT, BDT temperature, so the temperature at the BDT, this mainly depends on the on the nature of the lithosphere where the BDT occurs. So the main differences are among the oceanic lithosphere and the uh, continental one. So now, once seen the the the, the modeling that we carried out, we try to apply the, the, the results to, to different fields and then here in particular I will uh, will focus on the determination of the on, on the estimation of potential uh, maximum magnitude for seismogenic sources in the GEN region which is a sort of an exercise using the constraint given by the, the BDT and I will focus on this uh, just uh, uh, later on. Uh, now I, I would just also like to uh, to mention some other potential uh, applications, which could be, for example, using again the constraint of the BDT, uh, the, the calculation of seismic strain rate while uh, having uh, better uh, defined uh, the seismically deforming volumes, or also using the results of the modeling to calculate the total integrated strength, for example, for the upper and the lower plate. But now let's let's focus on the on the BDT uh, constraint. Uh, again, the concept is that uh, if we have a varying BDT uh, above it, we will have the, the seismogenic brittle layer and below it the, the seismic ductile deformation. And so uh, the variations of the BDT imply uh, variations of the, of the thickness of the uh, seismogenic layer. And then if we, if we add some information on the main seismogenic sources, uh, we can try to um, to calculate uh, the, the, the width and then uh, the, the maximum expected magnitude for these sources in a sort of independent way. Uh, obviously, there are there are some um, uncertainties related to the application of the empirical relationship themselves and also to the uh, BDT uh, determinations, as I just showed you. But uh, also, we, we assume, for example, a complete rupture of the of this potential seismogenic layer, which does not always occur, obviously. But this is a sort of an exercise to uh, to verify uh, how the, the BDT could, could uh, give us uh, information on maximum potential magnitudes. So uh, we, we use the, the sources as uh, presented in the GREDAS database from Caputo and Paulides. And these are the results. Obviously, uh, we, we give them with, with these uh, intervals because, again, we have to take into account the potential uncertainties. Uh, the general picture given by this exercise is the fact that uh, the higher values are obtained along the, the uh, thrust and compressional structures uh, here in the in external sectors, while it's more in general, the uh, normal and transitional strikes lift faults of the uh, mainland Greece, Agency, and Western Anatolia region are generally uh, uh, related to magnitudes uh, between 6.5 and 7. So, uh, now, to, to sum up, uh, uh, what, I, what I presented here is, is the logical modeling of the general region, starting from uh, the 1D strand envelope analysis, and where we identified the predominant parameters being the thermal ones. Then, uh, for what concerns the 2D modeling, we realized some transect trying to uh, focus on the variability of uh, the uh, logical features, especially of the presence of brittle ductile layers in continental and oceanic uh, subduction settings. And then we presented the 3D model with a shallow BDT, uh, generally around 10, 15 kilometers for most of Central Greece, Agency region, in Western Anatolia, and then the uh, a much deeper BDT in the lower plate. And finally, we applied the results to, to uh, different fields and in particular to the um, calculation of maximum potential magnitude. Uh, the concluding remarks uh, uh, that I would like to make is that generally uh, uh, the, the strength envelopes could effectively be rely, uh, reliable indicators for the logical behavior at depth that could also be linked to the seismogenic behavior. But obviously, a very careful selection of the input parameter is needed because of the uncertainties. And, 
then also for the 3D modeling, uh, this, this could help to detect some large scale trends in, in logical and certain tectonic uh, features and could be applied to different fields. So thank you. Uh, now I'm here for questions if there are any. Uh, grazie. Thank you, dear Massimiliano, for your uh, work and uh, results uh, presented uh, here. I cannot see any question. Uh, Orana, are there questions in the YouTube? No, I don't see as well, uh, Sapiro. So we can have a short coffee break and we can start the next session at 11.55, if you wish. Okay. Thank, uh, let's thank all the uh, speakers uh, of the first morning session, Active Tectonics and Seismicity. And we will continue with uh, the same sub subject, Active Tectonics and Seismicity, in 15 minutes. Okay, Oran? Okay, and he will be, that will be chaired by Massimiliano as well. Okay. Massimiliano will chair yes, the session. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you very much. So see you in 15 minutes.